In the heart of Ikeno, two best friends, Nkem and Chisholm, seem inseparable. Nkem, the star student with a bright future, is on the verge of winning an international scholarship. But Chisholm, tired of living in her shadow, makes a secret deal with their teacher, Mr. Ebuka, to throw Nkem off course. What starts as a jealous plan spirals into something far darker, as Mr. Ibuka's betrayal shatters Nkem's life in unimaginable ways. How far will envy go, and can Kem rise from the ashes? Sit tight as we unravel this tale of envy, betrayal, and the strength it takes to rise after being knocked down. Don't forget to subscribe to Savannah Storytime for more stories that will pull you in and keep you thinking long. In the bustling town of Ikena, the sun had just started to creep through the hazy clouds, casting a golden hue over the school grounds of Kina High. The day was like any other, full of noise, chatter, and the usual drama that came with students in their last year of secondary school. In the middle of this chaos, seated beside each other at the far corner of the classroom, were Nkem and Chisholm, two inseparable best friends. Nkem, slender and tall, with a sharp, glowing face that seemed to radiate intelligence, was the star student of Kina High. She was always focused, driven, and ambitious. Her uniform, though a little old, was always neat, her hair braided into two tidy cornrows. She had a sparkle in her eye, especially today. You could tell she had some big news she was dying to share. Beside her, Chisholm, round-faced, full-bodied, and effortlessly stylish, sat looking through the classroom window. Chisholm was beautiful, no doubt about it, with smooth caramel skin and lips that were always glossed to perfection. Chisholm. Nkem whispered excitedly, tugging at her friend's sleeve. You won't believe it, I'm taking that exam. The one for the international scholarship I told you about. Chisholm turned slowly, raising an eyebrow, though her heart skipped a bit. Nkem was already on a scholarship at Kina High, thanks to her incredible grades and determination, but this. This was something even bigger. An opportunity to study abroad, an international scholarship, possibly the ticket out of Ikeno and into a whole new world. Nkem's dream was to become a lawyer, and this was her chance to step closer to that goal. Oh, wow, Nkem. That's amazing. Chisholm managed to say, putting on her best smile. She leaned in and hugged her, but as she pulled back, a small flicker of something dark flashed in her eyes. Envy. It crept in slowly, like a snake slithering under the surface. While Kem had parents too busy to bother, Chisholm had everything, except her parents' approval. Why can't you be like Nkem, they would ask, comparing her to her friend at every turn. Nkem beamed, oblivious to the storm brewing in her friend's heart. Can you imagine? Studying in the UK or maybe the US. It's a dream come true. I can't wait to start preparing. As she spoke, the loud noise of a group of boys echoed from the other side of the classroom. Emika, one of the loudest in the bunch, jumped on a desk, cupped his hands around his mouth, and started mimicking a bus conductor. Conductor! Enter with your change, he shouted, causing a ripple of laughter to spread across the room. Or, oh, Nkem, tell your papa to stop fighting on the street and give me my change a bag. The mocking laughter filled the air, but Nkem simply smiled and shook her head. It wasn't the first time her classmates teased her about her father, Obi, a well-known bus conductor and street fighter in Ikeno. They didn't know her father the way she did, though, how he fought, not just on the streets, but for their family survival. Just ignore them, Nkem whispered, smiling at Chisholm, who had been glaring at Emika. Yeah, I know, Chisholm replied, her voice trailing off. The bell rang, signaling the end of break, and the classroom burst into motion as students returned to their seats. Nkem went on about her plans, talking about her study schedule and how she would balance preparing for the international exam alongside her schoolwork. Meanwhile, Chisholm listened in silence, her mind whirling with thoughts, her smile becoming harder to maintain. 
the sun had dipped below the horizon, casting a warm glow over the grand two-story house where Chisholm lived with her parents. It was the kind of house that screamed wealth, with its marble floors, polished wooden furniture, and perfectly placed chandeliers that reflected off the glossy surfaces. The dining room, where the family now sat for dinner, was no different, a long, shiny table set with expensive china and silverware, glistening under the chandelier's light. But despite the lavish surroundings, tension hung thick in the air, especially for Chisholm. Chisholm's father, Chief Okeke, sat at the head of the table, his tall frame dominating the room. He was a man of few words, but when he spoke, his deep voice had the power to either command respect or send a shiver down your spine. Her mother, Madame Okeke, sat at the other end, elegantly dressed as always, her soft voice layered with a sharp edge that could easily cut through anyone's ego. Chisholm, how was your test this time? Madame Okeke asked, lifting her fork with graceful precision. It wasn't a question of curiosity but of expectation. As usual, her tone implied she already knew the answer, thanks to the weekly phone calls from Chisholm's class teacher, who kept her up to date on her daughter's academic performance. Chisholm lowered her gaze to her plate, picking at the rice but not really eating. She knew what was coming. You got 65%, right? She leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. We have given you everything, yet you continue to fall behind. Nkem, on the other hand, with almost nothing, is out there surpassing you. She got 90%. At the mention of Nkem, Chisholm's chest tightened, and her grip on her fork tightened until her knuckles turned white. She already knew what was coming next. Do you know, Madame Okeke continued that Nkem is planning to write an international exam. She might even study abroad soon, on a scholarship, no less. Meanwhile, you, what are you doing? Honestly, Chisholm, her father added, shaking his head. Why can't you be like Nkem? She's doing so well, and now she might even go abroad. What excuse do you have? We've given you everything, but look at her, achieving more with nothing. There it was. The comparison that had been gnawing at Chisholm for years. Every word from her parents felt like a hammer driving a nail deeper into her heart. Nkem, Nkem, Nkem. Always Nkem. I'm trying my best, Chisholm mumbled, her voice barely above a whisper. Her father sighed heavily, waving his hand dismissively. Well, try harder. No more excuses. Madame Okeke dabbed her lips with a napkin, her gaze fixed on Chisholm. We expect better, Chisholm. We won't settle for mediocrity. Chisholm remained silent, her mind whirling with a storm of emotions. As her parents continued discussing dinner plans for the weekend, she was no longer listening. Her thoughts were consumed by one thing, Nkem's scholarship plan. How could someone who had so little whose father was a street fighter and a conductor, of all things, be so perfect. Suddenly, a dark thought crossed her mind, one that made her pause. What if Nkem didn't get that scholarship? What if she never got to go abroad? What if, somehow, Chisholm could find a way to stop it from happening? The thought seemed wild, even to her, but once it had entered her mind, it refused to leave. Maybe. Just maybe, Nkem didn't deserve all that success. Maybe it was time to put an end to the constant comparisons. The sun was setting low over Kine High, casting long shadows on the schoolyard. Most students had already left for the day, and the classrooms were quiet, save for the distant sound of a janitor's broom sweeping the corridor. Inside one of the empty classrooms, Chisholm stood by the window, nervously glancing at the fading light as she waited. Her mind was racing, a swirl of emotions and half-formed plans. She had noticed something about Mr. Ebuka, their strict yet charismatic teacher. He had a way with students, an odd influence, one that bordered on manipulation. And today, Chisholm was ready to use that influence to her advantage. It wasn't long before the door creaked open, and Mr. Ibuka entered, a stack of papers under his arm. 
Chisholm. What are you still doing here? Mr. Ibuka asked, raising an eyebrow as he set the papers on his desk. His voice, usually firm in the classroom, now carried a tone of curiosity. Chisholm's palms were sweaty as she turned to face him, her heart beating faster. This wasn't just some small favor she was about to ask, it was something that could change everything. Phone came, for her. I. I wanted to talk to you, Chisholm began, her voice soft but determined. She could feel the weight of what she was about to say, but there was no turning back now. Mr. Ebuka frowned slightly, crossing his arms. Go on. Chisholm took a deep breath. I know Nkem, she's one of your best students. She's brilliant, focused, and everyone knows she's going places. I was thinking, she hesitated for a moment before locking eyes with him. I'll pay you, double your salary, if you can make her lose focus. Just enough to distract her, you know. For a moment, there was silence. Mr. Ibuka's expression shifted from curiosity to disbelief, and then, something else entirely in interest. He straightened up, his eyes narrowing as he considered Chisholm's offer. Money. That was a language anyone could understand, but it was rare for a student to bring it to him so boldly. You're offering me money. To sabotage Nkem's education, he asked slowly, as if weighing the situation. Chisholm swallowed hard, her nervousness showing for just a second before she stilled herself again. Yes. I know it sounds bad, but I'm just asking you to make her less focused, just to miss the scholarship she's preparing for. You can teach her using a different syllabus. Mr. Ibuka rubbed his chin thoughtfully. At first, it seemed like he was about to reject the idea. After all, he was a teacher, someone with responsibilities, right? But the money. Twice his salary. That was hard to ignore. And besides, Nkem wasn't his concern. If anything, her brilliance had been making him look bad, too. She always outshined his lessons, outsmarted his quizzes. Then, a darker thought crossed his mind. Why just distract her when he could gain much more? With a slow smile creeping across his face, Mr. Ibuka leaned forward. All right, Chisholm. I'll take your offer. For the right amount, I'll make sure Nkem doesn't see that scholarship coming. But, he paused for effect, letting his words sink in. Don't worry about how I do it. Just make sure you have the money before the weekend. Chisholm felt a wave of relief wash over her. I'll have it. Twice your salary, I promise. But what Chisholm didn't know, what she couldn't have known, was that Mr. Ibuka wasn't just thinking of a simple distraction. Oh no, he had something far more sinister in mind. Something that would destroy Nkem's life in ways Chisholm hadn't even imagined. As Mr. Ibuka gathered his papers and gave Chisholm one last note before leaving the classroom, she let out a deep breath. She had done it. Her plan was in motion. Now, all she had to do was wait and watch Nkem's life unravel, never realizing that the price she was paying would come at a cost far greater than money. The sun had long dipped below the horizon, leaving the modest streets of Ikeno covered in a dim glow from flickering street lamps. Inside a small, humble apartment at the edge of town, Nkem sat at a wooden table, her textbooks sprawled in front of her. The dim light from the single bulb above flickered as if struggling, just like Nkem was. Her hand rested on her forehead, eyes squinting at the words in her book, but they bled together. The pressure was mounting. Her mother, Nke, had left for her shift at the hotel hours ago, and her father, Obi, would be on the streets until late, earning what little money he could as a bus conductor and sometimes brawling in underground street fights. It was always the same, she was alone, trying to balance the weight of her household duties with the enormous task of preparing for the international scholarship exam. No one at home asked how she was doing, not because they didn't care, but because life had simply swallowed them up. It wasn't just local competition anymore, it was global, and she had no one to turn to for help. 
Just as the thought of quitting crept into her mind, a knock echoed at the door. It was Mr. Ebuka, standing in the doorway with his usual forced smile. He was the last person Kem expected to see here, especially at this hour. Oh, Kem, he said, looking around the humble apartment, his eyes scanning the cracks in the walls and the simple furnishings. You're still studying, eh? You're very serious. Nkem nodded, pushing back the weight of exhaustion. Yes, sir. I have to. Mr. Ibuka stepped closer, his voice lowering as if he were offering her a secret. I know how hard you're working. You're smart, but this international exam, it's tough. Very tough. Why don't you let me help you? Nkem blinked, surprised by his offer. Help me. I. I can't afford a tutor, sir. My parents. Mr. Ebuka waved his hand dismissively. No, no, don't worry about money. I'll tutor you for free. After all, we can't let your talent go to waste, right? For a moment, relief washed over Nkem. This was the break she needed. Someone who could help guide her through the challenges of preparing for an exam that could change her life. Why would she refuse such an offer, especially when it seemed so kind and genuine? Really, sir, she asked, her eyes lighting up. Of course, Mr. Ibuka smiled wider, stepping further into the room. You deserve it, but don't let anyone else know for now. Let's start tomorrow. I give you all the extra lessons you need. Nkem nodded eagerly, her earlier exhaustion replaced by a small spark of hope. Thank you, sir, I really appreciate it. The next day, Nkem found herself in Mr. Ibuka's small office at the back of the school. It was quiet, far removed from the noise and energy of the students outside. She sat down, feeling slightly nervous but grateful. For the first few sessions, Mr. Ibuka was the perfect teacher, patient, knowledgeable, and always pushing her to think harder, to study better. He showered her with praise, telling her how capable she was, but slowly, his compliments grew more personal. You're a beautiful girl too, he would say, his gaze lingering just a bit too long. At first, Nkem ignored it, brushing it off as harmless. After all, he was helping her for free, wasn't he? And she needed him. There was no way she could afford a tutor otherwise. So, she stayed late after school, accepted his help, and slowly, without realizing it, let her guard down. The lecture continued for weeks and she had trusted him. The warm glow of the evening sun had long faded, leaving the sky a deep shade of purple as Nkem nervously made her way toward Mr. Ibuka's house. She clutched her school bag tighter, her mind spinning with thoughts. He said it's just extra tutoring, she reassured herself. Mr. Ibuka had always been kind, hadn't he? Besides, with her parents never around, who else could help her prepare for this crucial exam? But something didn't feel right. When she reached the small, dimly lit house, Mr. Ibuka greeted her with his usual, charming smile. Come in, Nkem, he said, his voice smooth and reassuring. Nkem hesitated at the door, her instinct screaming to leave, but her desire to succeed kept her rooted in place. She stepped inside, and with that, the line between teacher and student was crossed. The evening blurred into something Kem couldn't fully comprehend. Mr. Ibuka, who she once trusted as her mentor, became someone else entirely, someone who saw her vulnerability as an opportunity. He manipulated her with gentle words, making her believe that he was the only one who could help her, and in her confusion and fear, she found herself caught in his web. It went on for weeks and sometimes Mr. Ibuka would drug her to sleep over after learning that her parents are working night shift. Nkem, still clueless what was going on was more focused on the tutorials but she couldn't shake the feeling of being numb, a cloud of confusion swirling in her mind. Still, she said nothing. Who would believe her, anyway? She was just a girl from a struggling family, and he was the respected Mr. Ibuka. Shame and fear sealed her lips. Weeks passed, 
and the weight of what had happened hung over her like a dark cloud. Nkem threw herself into her studies, trying to pretend everything was normal, but something inside her was off. She started feeling weak, constantly nauseous. Her body, once full of energy and determination, now felt heavy and slow. One afternoon, during a particularly quiet day at school, Nkem felt the classroom spinning. She tried to steady herself, gripping the edge of her desk, but the world kept tilting. The worried whispers of her classmates barely reached her ears as she collapsed onto the floor. Nkem. Nkem, someone shouted as students scrambled around her. She was rushed to the school clinic, but the news that came after hit harder than anything she could have prepared for. At the hospital, surrounded by white walls and cold, clinical equipment, the doctor delivered the news that shattered her world. Pregnant. Nkem's heart sank. Her dreams, her hard work, her scholarship, all of it now felt like a distant memory. How? How could this have happened? She knew, deep down, that this was the result of the nights at Mr. Ibuka's house, but the thought alone was too heavy for her to bear. It didn't take long for the rumors to start flying through the halls of Kinahai. Gossip spread like wildfire, and soon enough, everyone was talking about Nkem, the brilliant girl who suddenly found herself at the center of a scandal. Did you hear? Nkem's pregnant. She was supposed to go abroad, wasn't she? Now look at her. I bet her father, the conductor, is furious. The students' whispers echoed in every classroom, every hallway, and even the teachers began to exchange glances. But no one knew the full truth. No one knew that Mr. Ibuka was the one responsible. He remained in the shadows, watching as Nkem's world fell apart, his reputation untouched while Nkem was left to carry the shame. The school authorities soon got involved, and Nkem's situation became an open secret. The teachers, concerned for her well-being, called her in for meetings, offering words of pity disguised as comfort. But Nkem said nothing, she couldn't. How could she accuse someone as powerful and respected as Mr. Ibuka? How could she explain that the very person meant to guide her had led her down this dark path? And so, Nkem carried the weight of it all on her own, her once bright future dimming with every passing day. The sun was setting over the dusty streets of Ikeno, casting long shadows over the rooftops and alleyways. In a small corner of the town, at Nkem's modest home, the air was thick with tension. Inside, Obi paced back and forth, his fist clenched, his eyes blazing with anger. The news had hit him hard, his daughter, Nkem, pregnant. His brilliant, hard-working Nkem, the pride of his life. How could this happen? Mama Nke, sitting beside their daughter, was trying her best to stay calm, but the tears wouldn't stop. She looked at Nkem, whose face remained glued to the floor. Her shoulders were hunched, her hands fidgeting in her lap, but she wouldn't speak. Nkem, Mama Nke's voice trembled, please, just tell us. Who did this to you? But Nkem couldn't. She couldn't bring herself to say it. Mr. Ibuka had twisted her mind, making her believe that everything he did was for her future. She was too ashamed, too scared to speak. All she could think of was the international scholarship she had worked so hard for. Now, all of that was slipping away. Outside, the neighbors had already begun to gossip. The once brilliant Kem, the girl with the highest scores in Kinahai, was now the center of the town scandal. It was then that a knock came at the door, followed by the shuffle of feet. Chisholm, along with her parents, stepped into the small, dimly lit living room. Chisholm's face was pale, her usual confidence nowhere to be found. Behind her, her mother and father stood with solemn faces, sensing that this visit was far more serious than they had anticipated. Chisholm took a deep breath, her heart heavy with guilt. She had never meant for things to go this far. She had only wanted to slow Nkem down, to distract her from her studies. But now, Nkem's life was ruined, and it was all her fault. 
She couldn't bear the weight of it anymore. I... I'm sorry, Chisholm started, her voice barely above a whisper. I didn't mean for this to happen. Mama NK's eyes widened as she looked between Chisholm and her parents, confusion etched on her tear-streaked face. What are you saying? Chisholm swallowed hard, her gaze shifting to Nkem, who finally looked up, her eyes filled with hurt and confusion. It's Mr. Ebuka, Chisholm confessed. I asked him to distract Nkem, to make her lose focus, but I didn't know he would, her voice cracked. I didn't know he would take it this far. A heavy silence fell over the room. Chisholm's parents stood quietly behind her, ashamed and stunned by their daughter's confession. Mama N.K. let out a gasp, her hand flying to her mouth in shock. Obi stopped pacing, his eyes narrowing in fury. Mr. Ebuka. Mama N.K. whispered, unable to process the betrayal. Chisholm's father, Chief Udo, stepped forward, his face grim. We didn't know, he said quietly. We only found out today when Chisholm told us. Chisholm's mother, Madam Udo, nodded silently, tears welling up in her eyes. We came to make things right, to settle this, she added softly. But the tension in the room was palpable. Obi clenched his fist, his jaw tight as he fought back the rage that threatened to explode. He had always known how to handle problems in the streets, he could fight, he could protect, but this. This was his daughter's future at stake. We'll go to the school tomorrow, Chief Udo continued, with the police. Mr. Ibuka must face the consequences of what he's done. But Obi wasn't listening anymore. His eyes were focused on the door, his mind racing with plans of his own. Going to the school with the police sounded right, but in Obi's world, justice didn't always come from the law. He had his own way of handling things, and Mr. Ibuka would soon find out just how dangerous it was to cross Obi's family. As the night deepened, Chisholm and her parents left quietly, but the damage had already been done. The truth was out, and the plan was set in motion. Tomorrow would be the day of reckoning, and Obi knew exactly what needed to be done. As the early morning light crept through the streets of Ikeno, Obi gathered street friends, men with names like Saw the Crusher, Odo the Serpent, and Tiny the Dragon. Today, we are going to make that teacher pay, Obi said through gritted teeth, adjusting his worn-out belt. His gun nodded, equally fired up. Obi's fist clenched, his knuckles cracking with each step as they marched toward Kinahai. The school assembly had just started, students standing in neat lines, teachers trying to maintain order. That was until the gate swung open and Obi's gang stormed in like a scene out of a western movie. The air went still, students wide-eyed as they watched the notorious street fighters badge in. Where is Mr. Ibuka? Obi shouted, his voice booming across the schoolyard. The students parted like the Red Sea, eyes darting around. In the back corner of the assembly, Mr. Ibuka, who had been sipping tea and enjoying his morning, suddenly felt a cold sweat break out. He tried to inch backward, making his escape, but Emika, the loud student, pointed at him, shouting that our master. Odo the serpent spotted him. There he is, he bellowed. Mr. Ibuka froze, his teacup slipping from his trembling fingers. Tiny, in all his towering bulk, grabbed him by the collar and dragged him to the center of the assembly ground where Obi was waiting, fist ready. Obi, seething with rage, stared down at the now terrified teacher. You ruined my daughter's life, he growled. You think you can get away with that? I didn't mean to. Mr. Ibuka squeaked, but before he could say more, Obi's fist shot out, landing squarely in his stomach. The teacher doubled over, gasping for breath. The gang took their cue and closed in on Mr. Ibuka. Sod delivered a sharp kick to his side, while Odo grabbed him by the shirt and lifted him off the ground as though he weighed nothing. You thought no one would come for you, huh? Odo snarled, shaking Mr. Ibuka like a rag doll. Just as Mr. Ibuka looked like he was about to meet his end, the gates opened once again. This time, Mama N.K. stormed in, 
Chisholm and her parents followed closely, looking pale and nervous, and behind them, two policemen strode in, casually assessing the chaotic scene. Obi's fists were raised, ready to strike again, but the sight of the policeman made him pause. One of the policemen, Officer Jide, stepped forward, raising a hand. All right, what's going on here? Why are you beating up a teacher in the middle of a school assembly? Obi, still panting from anger, pointed at Mr. Ebuka. This man, he's the reason my daughter's life is in ruins. Officer Jide turned to the crumpled teacher. Is this true? Mr. Ebuka, his face a mask of pain and regret, struggled to stand upright. Chisholm, she paid me, she asked me to distract Ken. But I, I took it too far. A collective gasp rose from the crowd. Chisholm, who had been hiding behind her parents, burst into tears. I didn't mean for this to happen, I just wanted her to lose focus for a little while since all of you won't stop comparing her to me. The two policemen moved toward Mr. Ebuka, lifting him off the ground and coughing him with little effort. You'll explain the rest at the station, Officer Tan said, leading the teacher away. As they marched Mr. Ebuka out of the school, Obi stood tall, his expression still simmering with anger but satisfied that justice had been served his way. Turning to his wife, Obi gave a small grin. See, sometimes you just need to handle things yourself. He could have easily denied. Mama N.K. sighed, shaking her head. You and your fist. Next time, try words first. Nkem sat in her small room, staring blankly at her textbook. The truth weighed heavily on her, her best friend, Chisholm, had been behind her downfall. But despite the betrayal, Nkem wasn't one to give up. The scholarship that once seemed within reach now felt distant, but she refused to let go of her dreams. She had fought through worse, and this would not break her. Chisholm, on the other hand, was drowning in guilt. She showed up at Nkem's house, tears streaming down her face. Nkem, please. I'm sorry. Nkem listened, her heart torn. Chisholm had only meant to slow her down, not ruin her life, but the damage was done. Forgiveness wouldn't come easily, and yet Nkem could see the regret in her friend's eyes. Meanwhile, the school had taken necessary measures to prevent the scandal from spreading further. Mr. Ibuka was in prison, and the school had indefinitely suspended Chisholm. The consequences were harsh but deserved. In an unexpected turn, Chisholm's parents visited Nkem's home, sitting with Mama N.K. and Papa Obi. Their faces were heavy with shame. We want to make things right, Chisholm's father said. Let us sponsor Nkem's studies abroad once she recovers. It was a glimmer of hope in the darkness, and Nkem, though shaken, saw her future wasn't entirely lost. Nkem knew she would rise again. Her dreams weren't shattered, just delayed. And though the scars would remain, they were a reminder of her strength and the lessons learned by all. And so, the path was a difficult one, full of unexpected twists, heartbreak, and betrayal. But in the end, every step taken shaped who she became, stronger, wiser, and determined not to let anyone steal her future again. This story reminds us that even those closest to us can sometimes lead us astray, but it's how we rise after the fall that truly defines us. Thank you for joining me on this journey through jealousy, betrayal, and redemption. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more tales that will capture your heart and challenge your mind. This is Savannah Storytime, where every story is a step into a new world. See you next time.